All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talk of the Town. My name is Brian Kelly, and we're here today with a very special guest, and her name is Kathy Fagan. And Kathy is uh, part of our new series called Behind the Faces of Milton. You've watched some of the other interviews that I've done, and I thought it was going to be a great opportunity for you to meet Kathy. She's running for selectman in Milton. She's running against Mr. Mullen, and most of you know Mr. Mullen. He's been on television about a million times in the last six years. So I think that uh, we'd like to get to know a little bit more about Kathy, and because um, it's quite a feat to run for selectman, right? And How is it select men, select women? How do we go? What's the I proper know, terminology? It's actually selectman. That's the that's the rule, selectman. So okay. kind of like senator. You don't call a, a female senator a senatress or anything. You know, you call them a senator. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll selectman. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I want to, the viewers to learn a little bit more about you, okay? Sure. Not just a campaign kind of stuff. They can go to your website for that, right? That's oh, matter of fact, what is your website? It's www.faganformilton.org. .org, okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, let's see. Well, let's just start. Why don't you tell the viewers at home, look over in the camera here, and just tell the viewers at home a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, my husband, Martin, and I moved here about 10 years ago with my oldest son, Brian, who was then six months old. We actually moved in on Halloween, so that was kind of funny because the neighbors saw That was bewitching. Yeah, we saw a lot of people in costume that we had to re-meet days later because <laughs> we didn't know who they were. Um, uh, since then, uh, I had been practicing as an attorney for 15 years, uh, managing my own practice and also serving on a variety of state boards uh, appointed by the governor and the Supreme Court of Massachusetts. And uh, my second child uh, came to be, Miss Molly. She came three months early with some special needs. And I decided we were going to have to change our lifestyle because I needed to spend a lot of time with Molly. So uh, I stopped working professionally and began putting Molly on track for kindergarten. Ryan's now uh, nine and a half, almost ten, and Molly is four and a half, and she's doing great. And I've been spending some time doing some work here in Milton uh, in my spare time, and hope to do more if I am if I'm elected selectman. Well, I'm sure there'll be enough for you to do as selectman. <laughs> You'll be busy. <laughs> um, so you got Molly, you have Brian, and your husband's name is Martin. And Martin, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet Martin? Oh, that's a funny story. <laughs> Martin, this is we yes, get the nitty gritty yes, here on Talk of the true. Town. Um, Martin's actually an identical twin, and oh. I knew his brother because uh, he, uh, his brother Andy, and I went. Who's to better looking, him or his brother? Funny. <laughs> Funny. You know, I think that one of the reasons he married me was because I was always able to tell the difference right away <laughs> between the two of them. And when he found someone who could do that, I thought, you know, he's going to grab onto that person. He knew he was special That's then. right. That's right. Um, uh, Martin was actually going to school in the Midwest. And uh, Andy, his brother, used to talk about his brother, Martin. And uh, we always thought that Andy was making Martin up because, you know, he's like... What do you mean? He goes, yes, I have an identical twin. He doesn't his live special here friend. now. Exactly. <laughs> that was like an imaginary friend. Um, found out, though, Martin came to visit Andy one day, and I was in the dorm walking around, and I saw this person and said, that's not Andy, and that's not Martin. Who is that person over there? And uh, it turned out it was, it was Martin visiting his brother. He really existed. And uh, we got to know each other. Here we are in Milton years later. Man, oh, yeah. man. What a country, huh? Yeah. So what do you think attracted him to you? If you asked him that question, because I was going to ask him if he came today. That was my question for yeah. Martin. Well, it's funny because he, um, I, at the time when I first got to know him, I was uh, in law school and beginning work as an attorney. And I think that was probably, uh, maybe he thought I was going to support him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's a smart man. <laughs> But, um, was I that think, the first question? What are you studying? No, he didn't ask me what I made or anything like that. But, uh, but I think we, we get along because we have a very similar sense of humor, which I think is so important in any kind of relationship. And I think that was probably it. That you know, we, I helped him out. He actually had a law problem with some uh, computer that had, had broken, and he wanted to know what he, to do about it. And I was able to answer his question. So he thought, yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but you know, that's what, I think that's why we get along as well as we do. We always try and keep a sense of humor about anything that's going on. Recognize that, you know, with, we've had some trouble with Molly. You know, Molly had to have open heart surgery. You know, she was born. Really? Uh, she was only a pound and a half when she was born. I mean, there was a lot going on when Molly was born. But we were always able to like take a step back and be happy with what we have and realize that you know we're going to get through this. We just have to try and she smile as much your as life. we can. Absolutely for the Excellent. better. Oh, absolutely. It's all about attitude, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Very good. All righty. Let's see here. Let's see mm -hmm. it. What is your favorite book? Oh, wow. <laughs> I have read so many books. 
<laughs> my camera person just said, why did you say that? <laughs> I saw her eyes. I leave my eyes behind the camera, the movie review, and she just gave me the look like, what are you doing to her? I always have several books that are going on at the same time, too. I mean, I'm reading Barack Obama's book right now on the audacity of hope. I'm reading... Um, Rereading Harry Potter to get ready for the movie this summer. I mean, it, pretty much all over the place. I guess I'm a mystery buff primarily, so mystery. I'll read mysteries as, as much as I can. But I, I mean, when I was uh, in Did Los you Los like Los the show Murder, She Wrote? You know, the funny thing was, is I mean, I like Angela Lansbury, right. you know, but I thought it was kind of goofy. I <laughs> hated that show. My mother-in-law <laughs> loved it. I couldn't stand she it. Really, it made well, me like think the of the mystery. That, yeah, it was kind of goofy, but, you know, it's the same way that people you used to ask me when I was in law school, I'm dating myself here, to say they want to know what I thought about L.A. law, you know, which was not at all what law practice is like. But it's not. People don't know. So Folks, they, you heard it here. Yeah, so, I mean, it, I think it's probably for anyone who's an expert in a particular area to see a television show that's, you know, a, a situation comedy, it's, like, very different than real life but uh, but I still I still I don't get a chance to watch that much television these days but uh, well that's because my next question so we got the books you're reading yeah. Obama's book and yeah. any, any book in the past that stands out that had an influence on your life um, I'd say I mean I love pretty much all of Jane Austen uh, you know I, I, I love uh, I, I always read Agatha Christie books. I mean, there's just there's so many books. Right. I, I can't think of any particular one. I think what really influenced me more were people than books in mm -hmm. my life. You know, people that I met along the way. Um, my dad was a labor negotiator for um, A.M.P. Walbaum, and my mom was a labor rep for her teachers' union. She was a teacher, so we had really interesting conversations at the dinner table about you know labor issues, and that prompted me to start thinking about what I wanted to do for a career and, and started getting involved in, in politics in my, you know, in my high school, but really thinking about maybe law as a way to you help do for problem solve. What did you do for politics in the I school? was the president of my senior No way! Well, Wait a minute, I think Jimmy Mullen was too. So was this is, really? This, we have this is a, um, the clash of the titans. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is so funny. I hadn't lived in that town, in the town, I mean, we moved a bit because of my dad's job, but I hadn't lived in the town where I wound up as president of the senior class for very long. I'd been there about a little uh, what under time half was that? a year. Milton. Well, actually, this was Summers, Connecticut, where okay. I ended up going to high school. But um, I think it was one of those situations, again, where I kept thinking, we could do something great here. We just need some organization, and we need some people who are willing to do some things. And um, I, I said it enough that people said, all right, you're going to have to now put your money where your mouth is and go ahead and do something. And I think that's what's happened here with this race as well, where I'd been involved in the library project. I saw that we could do a lot. I saw that we were missing opportunities here in, in Milton, and we could save money. And I, you know, I think people got tired of hearing me say we could do better. They just they wanted to say, "All right, do it, do it. We'll we'll help you. Just do it. <laughs> here I am." <laughs> wow. And so, do you think with your parents, with their role in the, with um, in the labor negotiations mm -hmm. and things like that? Mm -hmm. Did you become a lawyer to fight for, say, social justice? Is that kind of an underlying... To a large degree, yeah, I think it was. I mean, a lot of the work that I've done as an attorney for the 15 years that I did it was helping, you know, victims of crime, whether it's um, children, you know, in need of services, elders who are victims of crime. I, was, I did a lot of pro bono and court-appointed work as guardians of, of elders who needed help. I think that was part of what I wanted to do, is I wanted to try and problem solve. I could see that there were issues. I really wanted to do it, though, on a more local basis. I wasn't interested in, in doing you know, large civil litigation. I was interested in kind of the day-to-day -day, day -day things. Somebody needs help because their son got into a little tiff you know, in a bar one night, or somebody needs help because their, you know, their, their elder parent is having some difficulty remembering things, and how are we going to structure something so that that person is protected in terms of what they needed for health insurance. I mean, a lot of those little mini problems of how to help a family through a difficult situation is how I ended up getting involved and, and having a small firm that allowed me to have the flexibility to answer Make those questions hours. and help people mm -hmm. out. I mean, I still worked, uh, I mean, tremendous hours, 70, 80 hour weeks at times, but so that's why people ask why I have energy now, because now, you know, this is nothing like what I was doing for all those years. <laughs> but I think, you know, what I really want to do is to help people. I, I always felt that from a young age that I had something that I might be able to help, and, and so I'll, I'll give it a shot. That's, that's how we were raised, you know. You, you can't just sit back and complain about things. You have to stay invested. The day I, you know, went in to, to vote, both of my parents took me over to register to vote, because that was important. That was how they were raised and how I have been raised. How many you, siblings? I've got um, two brothers and two sisters. Where do you fit into the mix? I'm the oldest girl, second oldest child. 
Okay. Yeah. So um, we had a great we had a great upbringing. I have to say, you know, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> we uh, my parents, uh, my mom taught until uh, I think uh, I was born, and then she took some time off, and then went back to teaching to raise us. So I was fortunate that I had my mom home when I came home from school. Uh, my dad worked really hard. He had uh, and he always brought people home with him. I mean, there were always lots of people in our house. So that was also tremendous for me because I got to meet an awful lot of people and learn about what they did. And, so I yeah, you are pretty shy. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> Just a kind of a wallflower here. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a great story. Okay. Uh, what else? Let's see. So you became the lawyer. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Has been a, but being a lawyer, mm-hmm. is it different than what you perceived it would be when you chose that career? Yes. Actually, it is. I think Better? Kind of, worse? What? Well, see, what I did was, because I had, was interested in doing litigation, I ended up working as a law clerk through law school. Because I didn't want to go through law school with all the expense. I mean, I was working three part-time jobs to pay for law school. And I didn't want to get through it and find out that it wasn't something that I was happy with. So I began immediately working in addition to the part-time jobs to help out pay the costs of law school. I got a job pretty early on as a law clerk in a law firm. So I had a very good idea by the time I graduated from law school what it was going to take to run a law firm, you know, how I was going to fit into that, whether I liked litigation because I would go in with the attorneys that I was working for and get a better handle on what you did when you went into a, a courtroom. So by the time I actually graduated from law school, I'd already, you know, <laughs> had been in jails all over Massachusetts for some degree. Did you hear that? Kathy Fagan's yeah. been in jails. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, that, that made me I feel comfortable when I, I was going to be representing people that I knew what to expect. Mm. Um, and I, I also think that what's different about practicing law is, is mostly the part that nobody really likes is the collecting the fee. I mean, you want to help people. You want to solve problems. But you recognize because it's a business, you have to bill for it. And, you know, that to some degree is hard because sometimes the billable hours can kind of take control over what's happening. Instead of being able to be able to spend the time you really want to spend to help somebody, sometimes you're limited by the finances of it all. So, but, you know, I, I ran the practice for years. I had people working for me. You know, I... I came out when I decided that I wasn't going to do it anymore because of Molly's situation. I came out, you know, without any debt, you know, without any regrets. And eventually, you know, I'd love to do something more. I don't know if it would be litigation because the, of the hours involved, but, you know, maybe working for a nonprofit. I've served on boards of nonprofits, and I know how desperate they are for people to help mm. them. So that might be something I'll look at after, you know, a few years. But right now, Molly's going to have preschool for another year and then kindergarten for another year. So I have a, a few years here that I can devote to helping here in Milton. Excellent. Okay.